Hello, Rim the Most High God, and welcome to another edition of the Kingdom Intelligence Briefing. CABI's purpose is to provide an intelligence briefing for the body of Messiah that will both inform and empower the remnant in the last days. We want you to know that you're not alone. There are more of us than you realize. And the ranks of the resistance against Mystery Babylon are growing all around the world. This is episode number 211. I'm your host, Dr. Michael Lake, and I'm in the KIB studio today with the love of my life, Mary Lou. Hi, folks. We're having such a good day here today, and um, I'm hoping that you all are feeling um, that release of God's power that he talked to me about on April 24th. I've sure seen um, an unbelievable increase in the anointing. Since that time, haven't you, sweetheart? I sure have. And uh, at the same time, I, I mean, I've seen some really sad news about uh, some of the people that were involved in the attack on our family um, have passed away. You know, one family, a mother and a daughter, passed away within like a month. And I knew that when I started seeing these things, um, that we were getting close to that time of the judgment on, on those in the occult. And I almost feel like... Um, and I've been talking and talking and talking all these years, and I don't know if uh, if I've just not made it clear enough, or if it's just people get so uh, in you know embedded in this occult activity that they just sometimes they can't hear maybe. But Mike, it just seems like all that I said fell on deaf ears, and it's so sad to me because I'm thinking these you know I'm sure that they are convinced that whatever gods they're following, we're going to protect them and. But my goodness, what a what a horrible um, truth that they had to face upon death. I'm sure people felt the same way uh, in Genesis 6 before the flood mm-hmm. that Noah preached 120 years. And the whole time that they were, I bet you they were thinking, well, our gods are going to protect us from the judgment of God. And we, we need to understand many times God may be slow uh, to executing judgment because he's giving them every opportunity to repent. But there comes a time that the judgment of God does fall. and uh, Well, and I, I believe it's concurrent with when his power moves. Yeah. Because, because the moving of his holy power is diametrically opposed to the un, ungodly. And... Uh, it's just it's it's a hard to explain how I've, I've felt in the last week because I've I've also seen any time I've ever prayed with a family I'll see people be assigned especially a program multiple there'll be people assigned to try to get them back online and then there are horrible consequences when they don't and it's just the it's the saddest thing to me because I know that these people feel trapped they don't know where safety's at um, they've only known one thing you do what you're told or you suffer and that's that's the one thing that I'd love to be able to show people, and I thought maybe our testimony would be uh, would be helpful in that. Is I mean, we stood right in the face of all this evil, and God protected us. He's the only safety there is. There's no safety in anything in the, in the occult. I think that there are um, entities <coughs> that can be assigned to families, and and if if they do have an occult history that will protect them. I think that that, that exists, um, but I think that it, it would only be temporary and that, you know, it's, it's nothing compared to the protection of God. I remember a time when I felt like God was telling me, um, you know, that to bind up any spirits that were with our family to protect me, I, and I did. I wanted, wanted no protection from any entity. I wanted my protection from God and God alone. I knew that was the safety. Um, and, you know, it took me a long time, Mike. It took all the parts of my mind a long time to understand God. Because when you're, when you're in a situation, people in the occult, all you see is horrible things happening. And especially if you're hooked into the mind control where, where they let you see the extent of the power and how high it goes in all the nations and how they control everything, um, you, you don't see God's power moving. And so... And, and you don't understand it because you just think, well, God's all-powerful. In your mind, you're, you're trying to analyze it, and you're trying to say, well, God's all-powerful. Why doesn't he, he stop these people? 
But then, you know, that was huge to me when I found out, well, God gave authority down here to man. And when that evil stopped is when we take our authority and we actively stand for God's kingdom, and then his kingdom goes to work. But we've all been so deceived um, into walking outside the kingdom. And, I, you know, we're right, right now, we're, um, this is April 30th, and today and tomorrow is Beltane. And that's, you know, some people call it May Day. And this was, you know, like an old, old Irish, like as far back in the earliest Irish literature, they'd have special bonfires and the people in their cattle would walk around or jump over the bonfires or pass between two bonfires uh, to, for protection for their cattle. And, and what, you know, like right in the Word of God, it says that if you do these things, if you follow me, everything you got is going to be blessed. You know, yeah. your kids are going to be blessed. Your animals are going to be blessed. Everything you put your hand to. And so all these things Satan's tricked people into doing for protection, thinking there's some protection there when it is when it is ultimately unto your demise. And and they even brought it over. You know, I've talked about this before that, you know, I, I remember a picture of somebody in my family that had the little um, ring of the the little wreath of flowers on their head a little formal all and they they danced in a maple ceremony which is a which is a fertility fertility ritual yeah. because that pole represents the male phallic symbol then the kids are out around it make the circle represent the female and i i think that those were just thought as special little events you know, it's like a prom. It's like anything else. These special little events that kids are into, and it's an honor to be in it. And boy, hadn't and it it looks good, but no, no, I guarantee you, nobody ever put that together with what that represented in reality. Mm. It was just welcoming, and, welcoming spring, welcoming. Yeah, no one's you know, ever stopped and asked, "Where did this come from? Why do we do have. it?" None of us have ever. That's why we get in such trouble with things. And when, and, uh, when you when you start doing that, all of a sudden you start waking up out of the matrix, don't you? Well, that's it. And so let's let's say a prayer real quick, Father. We just ask that you would forgive the sins that are associated with with Beltane. Father, even if it's at churches, wherever wherever this is taking place, Father, out in the woods, whatever people are doing with the Wiccans and all these people that celebrate this, we ask you to forgive it, and um, you folks can ask for your territory. As far as our authority goes, Yes, Father. we ask that, that you would forgive those sins, and we bind up those spirits that have been invoked, and we command them to go in the name of Jesus. We need to realize that Beltane... Uh, there, there are what they're, what they're called, uh, access, a X I S like, like access on a wheel. It's, uh, so it's opposite Samhain. Uh, opposite. Yeah. Of Samhain. The it, Beltane and Samhain are what we call Halloween are the two highest days on the occult. Mm-hmm. And so we definitely need to be praying, uh, about, uh, this upcoming event that, uh, God would stop their occult workings, mm-hmm. that he would break their occult power and That's that it. he would establish his kingdom in its place. You know, one of the things, and uh, part of this I'm going to handle, part of it Mary's going to handle, the, the title of the episode today is Principalities and the Foundations of the Earth. And Dr. Michael Heiser has done such a brilliant job of taking apart Psalms 82 from a uh, scholarly, uh, academic point of view, revealing the divine counsel, and uh, that this, this Psalms 82 is actually a prophetic vision or prophetic word that God is judging the principalities and powers that fell from his divine counsel at the Tower of Babel. But one of the things that I think a lot of us overlook, and, and I didn't even really, it didn't really jump out at me until you brought it out uh, yesterday. In verse 5 it says, And they do not know, nor do they understand, they walk about in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are unstable. Uh, it says King James Version out of course. Yeah, which which mm-hmm. causes them to be shaken. Right. Uh, looking this up in in Hebrew, I believe it or not, is Musad, in Hebrew meaning foundation. But interesting, when I looked it up in the uh, Complete Word Study Bible, it says it is used both symbolically of the foundations of the earth, uh, Babylon, and so it's used both literally and figuratively. It can mean the foundations that God established on how things are supposed to operate. But I, I think here it may be speaking on two different things. We, we, when we learn when God created the heavens and the earth, that all three heavens were one. I deal with this in my second book. They were all, they were all three. After man sinned, that flaming sword separated them. They're still in alignment, but God separated them, and, and there, there, is a, there is a divine order to things. 
And in this principality war, what they're what they're one of the things that they're doing, I think they're actually trying to both literally move the earth out of that alignment to where it's harder to reach the third heaven. It gives them more control from the second heaven. But I also think that everything that they're doing on planet Earth, and this goes all the way back to Nimrod, that they are trying to change the way that God created things on how they're supposed to be. Yeah, because then they can get things done. Absolutely. <laughs> it, it puts it out of order. There, it, it puts it out of order. Uh, and it also begins, they're, they're, they're trying to separate it from God's rulership because they know this prophecy in Psalms 82. And the further that they get away from, from the authority of God and taking the world out of alignment from the authority of God, it, it, it's like making him more distant. If and so you will. we have a spiritual aspect and a physical aspect. And so don't you think there's a real possibility they're using technology? <laughs> for the physical aspect to, to move things. You know, we had a, um, I know this probably means more than, than I know because of uh, things with programming, um, but we were talking about last time on the last podcast <laughs> um, about the, the rock of our, the stability of that. Mm-hmm. And uh, I thought about, in Luke six forty six and forty nine, um, where Jesus is talking about the man that built uh, his house and dig deep and laid the foundation on a rock, and when the flood arose, the stream beat vehemently upon that house and could not shake it, for it was founded upon a rock. But he that heareth and doeth not is like a man that without a foundation built a house upon the earth, against which the stream did beat vehemently, and immediately it fell, and the ruin of that house was great. And I thought, boy, if there was ever a time. You, you know, to think about both the physical and the spiritual aspect of this because we know that, that there's a, a shaking. We know that, that that I believe it's why God has has waited so long to deal with some of the evil is because when this shaking happens, Mike, if we're not firmly on the rock, you can be shaken with it. Yeah. And and look what Satan's done. Like Let's just the example of Beltane here. You know, tons of things are done. And, and nobody even knows that it's, you know, you've got people. It, it always worries me like when we go through the um, Easter season because then you have all the people that have done the Easter egg hunts and things like that. And then you have, and um, it's, and I'll just give you an example where, you know, the president recently said about, uh, you know, going ahead and getting the measles vaccine. Well, before that, I've heard him say, you know, that, that there are problems with the vaccinations. So, you know, here we have this Easter egg hunt at the White House. Uh, they didn't do it on Easter Sunday. They, I think they did it the next day. But, but these are the things that I've seen that there may not be like a, a physical attack, but sometimes when somebody goes through something like that, it opens the door enough for someone to, be, to have influence. The, the, the enemy gains influence. Because right now, I, I am so concerned, and I mean, this has been coming up in my spirit a lot over the vaccinations, because I, there have been reports I've read where they've said, and I mean, you won't hear this on the big news probably, but where there's smallpox coming in with some of these immigrants and stuff. Different variants of, of measles, this, mumps, this all kinds This could be, you know, no telling, a virulent strain more than normal of measles. Measles is a pretty serious disease. But I've just thought, we're, this is kind of a setup. If you ever wanted to bring something in and take out a lot of the population, you know, this would be a great way to do it. And so if you do get the vaccinations, um, then what are they putting in them? You know, that's why, boy, we got to pray. Um, you know, we've tried to talk your mom out of getting the flu va- vaccines because she, she got one this last year and got a horrible case of the flu. I mean, it's it's. I think it's something we've really got to pray about and how do we take each step and really pray about, the government interfering in this because they're they're going to start. I guess they are in New York fining people yeah. if they don't get vaccinations. So see how the enemy works. Like like he he gets gets people to do things that open up the doors of influence. And there's there there are anomalies they can't explain. Like there was a a navy ship that 100 percent of of all the all the sailors were vaccinated with MMR, and yet they all got measles anyway. Well, remember uh, when our youngest daughter got the mumps, there was nobody in our entire community, nobody the doctors heard of or anything that got the mumps, but she just got the mumps. 
Yeah. And she'd been had the vaccinations. We got our kids those vaccinations. We did. I followed exactly what the doctor was telling me to do when they were little. Well, you know, the I, I listened to the pediatricians. We did exactly. I fed them like they said. I, you know, and, and back then, I've I've just regretted that so much that I didn't try to do some research on health because I don't think it's good for for babies to be drinking all that juice. They had me putting watered down juice not too far after they were they were born. I mean, you just add all these things, and and I've thought about that now. You know, the reason God made a piece of fruit the way he did is because it's got the fiber with it. Yeah. Your body can metabolize. And when you just start, the concentration of the juice is unbelievable, the amount of sugar that's in that. So it's all those things now I look back on, and I just think it is a miracle we're all alive, eating the way that we've eaten with the tainting of the foods, with the chemicals on the food. I just look at that, and I think, God help us. Well, yeah. I, I think that's one of the reasons. I mean, I, I pray over, you know, no matter what kind of shot that I get to the doctor or whatever, whether it's a vaccination or, or if you, you know you, you end up getting well, real sick. Well, you get sick tetanus and, shots if you get cut yeah. or anything. I mean, uh, I pray. I pray over everything. I pray over my vitamins before I take them. I we, we pray over yeah, our I'm, meals because I, I I think that's important because I know it is. What I, we what we have seen, especially um, if your if your kids are getting immunizations, stretch them out. Don't let them overload their system and pray over the things. Yeah. Because it, sometimes there there is an alchemistic uh, witch's brew, if you will, I because there's, there's foreign DNA. I just think a lot there's of things. that on almost everything. Yeah, you know, it's if I buy an item at the store, even if it's a piece of furniture or something, I ask forgiveness for the sins of the of the you know the people that made it, the people that designed it. I go through, and it you know you probably think, oh Mary, you don't have to do that. I I'm telling you, I brought stuff in my house before, and then had to realize it had a spirit with it. And I yep. had to go back and say those prayers. The minute you say that, it's gone. It doesn't have a legal right to stay anywhere if you say those prayers. But we always pray over our food. And, you know, I was thinking as I was reading this about Beltane, because I have um, on my dad's side, mostly Irish, and I thought, oh, my goodness, I wonder if that's why I've had so much trouble in my life with milk. You know what I'm saying? Like it's the, it's the things... And also, you know, if with witchcraft, there's always the use and Freemasonry. There's always uh, things they do with wheat. And I thought I've had so much trouble with wheat and so much with wheat. Now, part of that, part of like food allergies and sensitivities and things like that, I know is coming from what they're putting on it. But there's also, that's a physical part. And the modifications but, they've done. Too. Right. But there's also a spiritual part to that. <laughs> and I thought I've never, till I was reading about Beltane this morning, I'd never read that before you know, about the, that they would take their cattle and they'd jump through these bonfires and for protection and stuff like that. So there's something else I'm going to pray about, um, just on the spiritual end of that, because I, I didn't know that the, the cattle were involved in that. In the things I'd read, it was mostly talking about, uh, you know, the, uh, fertility part. And maybe it was even for those, those cows to be fertile. I mean, you, most of this was for know. prosperity. When yeah. you go back and you see these old rituals that they did, and I, I can promise you this, if there was anything in my family line that was like this, they would have done it because I had the most superstitious family in the world, and it was crazy stuff like holding a needle up and thread and which way it goes, you know, determines the birth of the baby and had a um, my mom's aunt would take uh, warts off of people. And she would do this. I don't know what it was. I never saw it, but it was something about she would take uh, a piece of something, do some kind of little ritual, bury the, bury that thing, and then the wart would leave. And I'm thinking, we were just, I mean, just in the Country front part, I can tell yeah. you that that was going on. Not And, and that, see, that would have set us up to be chosen for some of these experiments. You know, because it, if you've got a background in the occult, you're already open up to esoteric things. So it's much easier for them to take that, build upon that with, with technology and this scientific junk for mind control. Um, and see, see the Ozarks, the reason it is so prevalent here is that it's all this old country witchcraft everybody's done. And people think that's harmless. You know, they think it's harmless. And then, then the kids are opened up to all kinds of psychic things. I remember a person in in my family dreamed that um, a baby was going to die. My aunt and uncle's baby was going to die, and it was stillborn. I mean, there's all kinds of those things meshed together. That's why, well, somebody could say, well, that's a, a gift of, of prophecy. No, that's that's the third eye getting opened up. That's 
opening up to like mediums and things like that. Uh, could they have a prophetic gift? It it could be, but boy, we better be making sure the stream's purified. Absolutely. You know, that's why with me, because of my background, man, do I pray over everything uh, like that and just bind the enemy. He's not going to use me because I'm, I'm not going to have that. I'm not going to operate in that. If, they, if I wasn't sure, I'm not going to let anything flow because I'm not going to be used by the enemy. And, I, and how many people, Mike, have done winding the maple? How many people have hunted Easter eggs in their life? Not a thought, not, not a thought of what, what this could mean. You know, because we're not taught that. No. We're just saying, hey, these are just traditions. They're just fun things. We just do this and we decorate and somebody up there is making a billion dollars off of everything we buy. <laughs> I, th- I think that's the other side of it. Off, it is, off, off yeah, all these holidays that are, that are non-biblical, uh, the elite make billions of dollars off of and it basically funds their operation as well as keeping a, uh, a lot of businesses. If it was not for December, they would go bankrupt. Mm-hmm. Well, and, and what we can learn from this is is when we see those things, like the Easter egg hunt at the White House and things like that, that's where we can we can stand in that gap and say, Father, forgive that. Cover that with the blood of Jesus. But, uh, you know, cover any breaches that were made that made an opening to the enemy in the White House to influence, to, to bring in that. And that's, that's what's going to make the difference, Mike, because um, when I was reading that, when God kept talking to me this week about found, foundations, and I went to... Um, you know, Psalm 82, and I thought, that's probably years ago what God was showing me, that there was something done in the physical, a movement. Uh, there was a shift. There was something done in the physical that kind of got us offline, so to speak, with the kingdom of God. And so so not only do we have a, some big physical, you know, and it may maybe it was something like that, um, you know, kind of like CERN, but they had it before anybody knew it. Because, you know, by the time we knew CERN, you know they've already had well, they, all kinds they, there of There were junk. a lot of different kinds. This is probably one of the largest ones of that scale, but there have been many others. So so you got all that junk going on. You've got all this infiltration of these occult things into our society. And it's just, it's something else. <laughs> um, I, I think that's part of what we're talking about here in Psalms 82. Uh, I want to read from the New International Commentary of the Old Testament most scholars see that they here, talking about in, in Psalms 82, as the other gods. But they also be the results of the gods' failure and reflect the impact of their acts on the people. It is certainly possible that the they is not one or the other, but both the gods and the people whom the acts of the gods impact. So all this paganism is coming in, all these things that the mm-hmm. principalities and powers to take you away from the ways of God. What's interesting here is the last statement. Either way, the result of the acts is quite serious because the foundations of the earth are in jeopardy. The situation must be addressed. And so when you really look at all of of Psalms 82, the, the reason that God is acting and that God judges them is because the foundations of the earth are in jeopardy. And guys... That that's why we. How how long ago was it, Mary? That God began having me talk about a divine realignment, and that's oh, when we're over long, another long about four or five years yeah. ago, uh, for us to realign with the kingdom of God. Because regardless of what they have done with the earth, I'm made of earth. That when I got born again, my spirit man is connected to heaven, the third heaven, the throne of God. My soul is connected to the second heaven. Of course, my flesh is connected here. If when I repent and begin walking in the ways of God, I begin realigning all of me to the way that God created things so that my foundations are sure. Right. And that this is a big part of what we have been talking about is as the, the more that they're moving society away from God. Mary, you can see this, especially in the Western world, in every aspect. Um, you can't, you know, they're, they're, they've come out with new anti-Semitism laws, which I think is, is just. You don't, you don't, you know, you don't, you don't uh, incite violence against the Jewish people. I don't think we should incite violence against, against Muslims. But the one that right now is open season, that nobody is enforcing the laws, is Christianity right now, Christ, and we, we have had scholars document that right now worldwide, this is some of the worst persecution the church has ever seen since the Roman Empire. 
and it's open season because they are trying to squash those that are seeking God to come back in alignment with the third heaven, and it's a threat to those who are trying to come in a lot with a new alignment with the second heaven that God is going to eventually judge. Well, it it tells you in the eighty second Psalm how these fallen angels are empowered by unjust judgments, and wicked persons are accepted. Yeah. Are we in a time of unjust judgments? That's why it's so critical that we get a Supreme Court swayed to a place that they they'll they won't do these unjust judgments. I mean, there's been some unbelievable judgments made by that court. And then we've also got this to, our wicked persons are being accepted. It's like it's like Lester Semrall said, you know, years ago I heard him talking about the seven things that God told him were going to come to the United States is actually why God brought him back from overseas uh, as an evangelist, brought him back to minister here because these were the things that were coming. And at that time, it would have been unheard of for there to be homosexuals accepted and all these things. And he even said it would go to bestiality. And, Mike, we're, we're seeing it. We're seeing these things happen. Now, the good news is, was after that, there's, there's going to be a great revival. God's going to move in a great way. But, but everything that he outlined there that God told him, that he said, God, this just can't be. He was, he was arguing you know, said, this just can't be. And, he, you know, he came back over here, and he saw a lot of it, you know, before he passed away. Uh, and so he did, and I think he was going on even the uh, before uh, Smith Wigglesworth died. Smith Wigglesworth said there was going to come a great revival mm-hmm. uh, before the Lord returns. Well, and I th- I think we're seeing what what's given these territorial spirits not only their placement because now I I don't think they had the placement here in the United States over territory until the Freemasons came. When the Freemasonry started, now there was there would have been some by some of the pagan things that were going on here, because not all Indian heritage is good, you know. That there's some that was, but there there are other things that are pagan, and that's just. I mean, I love that. I love you know that I've got it in me. I'm Cherokee, but um, but you have to watch that stuff just like everything else because some of that stuff is connected to paganism, and you'll you'll let another spirit in. I don't care what it's calling itself. You'll let a wrong spirit in if you're not careful about that. That's why you have to watch what you bring in your house and stuff like that. You know, and and the thing of it is, if you've got got peace in your house, then then you'll know. Okay, I pretty much got it clean. But if you just keep having all kinds of troubles and nightmares, and then you got to start looking for something. There's some cause of that. That's not that's not God's um, will for us. Is we're to have peaceful sleep. He gives his beloved rest, sleep, and and so, uh, but I I think that the acceptance of wickedness is one of the key things that keeps this going. Now this is why it's so key right now. I've never seen as many people as I have in the last couple of years that are saying I'm not doing this stuff anymore. I don't care what anybody says about me. I don't care what anybody thinks. I'm not doing this stuff anymore. These pagan things that are that are empowering these territorial spirits i'm not gonna sit by and say abortion's okay anymore and 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 as people do that that's why so much is going on you know and and i can't remember if we mentioned this or not if we didn't forgive us but josh peck's little boy's in remission praise god that's the power of prayer mike you get thousands and upon thousands of people praying god moves and there's healing and god's kingdom flows but but the the trouble is is there are there are things that will hinder a person's prayers being heard. And the closer we get to walking in God's kingdom, the closer we get to walking as his words laid out, the closer we get to, to being <coughs> imitators of Jesus, yeah. walking like he walked, thinking the way he has thoughts. We're supposed to have his mind. And, you know, that's one of the things that, that I, I used to think was impossible. I, I used to hear people, you know, quote things about pray, you know, without ceasing and, and be so excited about God and things like that. And my, in my state, that just seemed so foreign to me. I just thought, how would you ever get there? How do you ever get there? And, you know, my mom used to say this, I guess some saying she heard a preacher say one time about that somebody could be so heavenly minded that they were no earthly good. I don't think there is such a thing as that. 
Because the more heavenly minded we are, the more earthly good we will be. Yeah. You know, yeah. you don't have to just keep your head in the clouds and just do that all the time. I mean, I I love to pray and things like that, but I I'm so aware of my surroundings and conscious of of the world. I don't ever lose track of that, or you know. <clears throat> and I, so, I think some may have uh, may have developed or coined that phrase because of people moving by religious spirits, but never by the spirit of God. You won't well, that, that that would be the difference. Yeah. And I, I remember the, the reason that I can say this is I know where I was. I know how it felt to be in bondage. I know how it felt to be so frustrated and thinking I've, there's something, you know, controlling me more than what I can get God's kingdom in me. I just, I just knew something was wrong. And of course, my, my seeking God on that, he showed me and boy, was it a mess. And, you know, I just gradually made my way out of that. And I'm still, you know, seeking God, Lord, show me anything. I need to change it. But I, what is a, a a wonder to me is how I went from feeling so unconnected to God to my every breathing moment I feel connected to Him. I wake up in the night praying. I wake up in the morning and I'm I'm seeking Him. I it's and it's not like I'm. You get to a point where it's just natural. It's just your state of being, and I'm and I'm thinking. Oh, what a difference that was from where I was to where I am now. Because you begin learning to move in the third heaven realities and that your spirit is connected to the throne of God. Right. And, you know, a lot of what uh, I wanted to talk about today, too, is for me to get to a place where I could flow with God, I had to get my mind set on what God says I am, not what this world said I am. And I don't know if there was uh, probably something did happen when I was a kid that put me on the target list for the old enemy to watch me or something. Um, because, I, I mean, from the time I was a kid, Mike, there were people saying stuff to me to where if it, that's all I heard in my head. All I heard were the things that people said. You're this, you're that, you're, you're not going to be this. You're. And so I had to get to the place where I wrote down everything that, that was said about me. Everything that made me think I'm I'm worthless, I'm this, every event, and I wrote it down, and I crumpled that thing up, and I destroyed it, and I said, you don't belong to me. You don't hold me. You're going to let me go. And, and, you know, that's what I think the world, when the word's talking about, you know, you're a new creation, old things are passed away. Now, some people will just say that and never deal with anything in their past. They just say, oh, that's passed away. I don't have to deal with it. You have to face it. You have to face things in the past. You have to face things like generational curses. You have to, you have to, to me, you have to do some digging. If, if your life's miserable and you're not in a state where you think this is where God wants me, you know, this is where like to where I'm victorious. And no matter what I walk through, God takes me through it. And I still walk in the victory. If you get beat down, if you're just constantly going through it, then there's something in your past still got a hold of you. So you can't just sit there and quote that and quote that and say, well, that's in the past. It doesn't hold me. That it, yeah, it's, it's, I can't make any headway, but there, that's in the past. You know, there's no sense in doing that. You have to face the reality. There's something you've got to deal with back there. But the good news is, is there's not one thing, whether it was something somebody said about you, a, a belief system you had about yourself, thinking you're not worth anything, thinking you don't look right, you know, you don't look perfect, all the things that the world says is important. That, that's the things that we've got to crumple up Throw that thing in the trash, and and if it tries to rear its ugly head, said that's not true. Well, that's the kind of warfare that Paul's talking about in Second Corinthians, where we pull down every every high thought that exalts itself against the knowledge of Christ, and that that's part of the sanctification process. And the believer today is not taught proper uh, modes of sanctification because you cannot bring down a giant until you face the giant. Mm-hmm. And so there, there are things in the past, if, if it's still pulling on us, we got to face them, but we face them with a new reality and a new authority in who we are in Christ. And we, we're, we're kind of like David saying, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Now, he may have had me cowering in holes in the past, but now I am a new creature and I, I have found that I have a new authority and now I can face him in the name of God. Well, you know what I can look back on? And there's always spiritual connections to this stuff. Satan is going to try anything he can through any means to try to get a wound in you so that, that you will not succeed. There had to be something known <coughs> way back when I was a kid that I was going to stand against um, what Satan had done with Freemasonry. Yeah. Because I can look back and I can tell you one after another after another, the people that wounded me 
were connected to Freemasonry. You know, I think if we can see uh, beyond just the physical realm, I think I think there's more uh, there, there's more information translated, you know, or, or given. That's why the Bible says when we get to heaven, we're going to, we're going to know as we are known. Mm-hmm. That uh, I think when we're walking in in, in the third heaven, all I, all I got to do is look at you, and I know everything about you. I know your character. I know all this. There's nothing hidden. And, and everything had, everything that's been taken care of by the blood is under the blood. But I, I know you, and I, I know the destiny that you're supposed to have in God. And uh, I think people that are really sensitive to the Holy Spirit, they can sense that on people. Uh, there can be prophetic words about that. But I think the enemy can see it too. Oh, and that's I see, why I the, think there, is. Uh, there are many that have moved in divine healing that, you know, Satan tried to kill them when they were little with sickness and disease, and you see all these different things. There, there has to be more to it. But guys, if there was ever a time to face your giants, if there was ever a time to make sure that everything within me is aligned to the Word of God, aligned to the kingdom of God, it's right now. Well, that's true. And you know, I was, I was thinking the other day. You know, have you guys ever, ever thought about this? Uh, have you ever thought like this thought goes through your mind? Because this is something like Satan used to do to me all the time. Is he would. He'd make me think, well, what makes you think that you're right? What makes you think that this is, you've got the right, right religion? You know, you know, the Muslims think they've got it. All these people think they got, what makes you think you've got it? And, and you know what, like when I got free at one time that came to me and I thought, no, I'll tell you how I know because he lives on the inside of me. Absolutely. You know, Muhammad's not going to live on the inside of somebody. Buddha's not going to live on the inside of somebody. There they all these religions we have a risen savior and he's alive yes. and he moved on the inside of us and and so he the more that we can get ourselves out of the way the more that we'll be able to flow with that now i was thinking about uh, we used to go to assembly of god church uh right but we were we started going there before i came out of my depression and so probably there was some prayer i know the pastor's wife was praying for me about the depression and and so I think those prayers were, were part of me being able to come out of everything. And I'm so thankful for that. I love her. I always will love her and be praying for her too. Um, but we had, our neighbors had an exchange student. And I can't remember where she was from. It was over there, like close to Russia, wasn't it? Yugoslavia, I think. Um, anyway, she, she was there with them. And so they all went with us to church, and she went there too. And we had just a wonderful worship service that day. And so she was sitting by me, and she leaned over, and she said, "She said, Mary, and she couldn't speak English well, but she said, what, essentially what she said is, Mary, I'm, I'm crying, and I don't know why. And so I was able to talk to her, and I said, you're, you're feeling the Holy Spirit. That's, that's what it is, is you're feeling the Holy Spirit, the movement of the Holy Spirit, and how much God loves you. And I thought, you know, you can have all these other religions, all these other things, but he comes to live inside of you. And what I found out was my spirit was clogged because of what had happened to me and parts of me had, had to separate and all these different things. My spirit wasn't free to flow with the Holy Spirit. Now, in my, you know, I had a pretty bizarre case there. And once I got that free, you know, it, it was like God just cleared the path for a while. When I came out of that depression, that's the only way I describe it. Everything just got blown <coughs> out of the water, and I was free to flow in God's kingdom for that eight months. Then it all came back. I had to fight it off because I, I had authority, and I had to get rid of but that. But God's junk. grace, that, that time that you had, God was just filling you with the word and preparing yes. you for the battle. And and I felt for the first time in my life what it was like to have the Holy, feel the Holy Spirit fully flowing. And my, what's natural for a Christian should be hunger for the word, hunger for the things of God. I'd never felt anything close to that in my life. So what I'm saying is this, this is something I found in my extreme, you know, deliverance and healing journey. But this applies to a a lot of us. We've all been duped into doing things that clog the spirit it's, you know, just think, think of it as a pipe that is running from the Holy Spirit within you through your spirit to where it can can work through your whole mind and, and your emotions. And so we hunt Easter eggs, clogs that, sp- that little pipe up. <laughs> yeah. We do this, clogs that pipe up. We, all these things that Satan's trying to get us to do, trying to get us to do. And so I can testify to this of the absolute... Um, 
unimaginable freedom that comes when that pipe gets free. And so that's one of the reasons, you know, I, I talk to people about anything. Search, search your family. Search anything that you think could be there that's clogging that pipe. Because here's what Satan's afraid of. And I can tell you even how, how it's increasing. He's afraid of people getting free to where the Holy Spirit flows unhindered in them. And they've got discernment. And they've got the gifts flowing. And they're, and they're praying based on what the Holy Spirit's telling them. Um, you know, there are, the number seven is significant in God's three, seven. We know that numbers are significant to God, and that's also why the Kabbalah and all these other occult sides of things are into numerology and all this stuff. They use numbers and use the stuff counter to what God does with numbers. Well, and we know that there's significance with God in the number seven, the number three. And I've heard people say, you know, well, that whole thing about the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit was came out of paganism. No, God was there first. All three were there first. So it came from him. So there's, there's a, a thing about completion with the yes. number seven, perfection with the number Absolute. three. Absolute. And so there's, there's periods of time that we know that there are seven years uh, tribulation. We know seven significant. Well, I've... I stumbled onto this um, through watching the mind control things, and, and I saw that there were these cycles that the occult community uses. One, uh, and they were just so significant. 1998 was one. I was supposed to die that year. I was supposed to die again in 2005. I was supposed to die again in 2012. And so there, there's these seven-year cycles. And they were powerful years in the occult. I could see the moving. I could see, man, it's building. And, Father, I've just got to stand here and believe you're going to tear it down. Guess what? We're at another start, 2019, of, of one of these seven-year cycles. It's different, Mike. Yeah, it is. <laughs> because I think God is, is aligning things. He's been working on his people. He has been awakening the remnant. That, and the remnant are praying. Yes. And this is what Satan's been fighting so hard to stop. If you get that pipe clogged up. Clog that pipe up to where the Holy Spirit can't flow through your spirit and get you sanctified and get you to a place where you're flowing in the kingdom. Satan's not got a whole lot of trouble, has he? Because we've been given authority down here, so we don't even mess with these evil entities that are ruling up here because, hey, look at all the abortions. Hey, look at all the sin. Oh, great, now we're, now we're saying homosexuality is okay, even though it clearly states in the Bible it's not. When you do those things, it's, it's just building the power, building the power, and it's massive. But one praying Christian can change it. Can change it, and now we've got thousands upon thousands of people that are saying, "I don't care what I've got to do. I don't care if I lose a friend. I don't care if I may have my family may leave me. I'm walking with God." When Satan sees that, he knows he's in trouble, and so we're in. Here, here's what we're we're at. We're at that place I saw years ago, where why I've been preaching or. I didn't consider myself preaching. I was just trying to warn people for years. I didn't consider myself in the ministry since a few years back. It's not been long because I mostly was trying to tear down the mind control and trying to save little kids and stuff, honestly. Well, that could be considered ministry, too. Well, well, but I'm just saying, though, I never considered that ministry. I was just, just trying to get this stuff stopped so the little kids would be safe my main goal. And I was trying to help people in the process, even the people in the occult, but I sure couldn't do it then like I can now because half the time I was wanting to, to smack them right in the face. <laughs> I really was. I was so aggravated. That, and it was just evil, just pure old evil. And, and evil on their faces when they'd see someone get hurt. Evil when they're telling you that they tore this pastor's life to pieces. Evil when they're telling you this person was killed in a car wreck. And to me, I mean, I just... I just couldn't fathom it. It was just beyond, you know, what I could comprehend at the time. So I didn't handle things right, guys. I think I can now. But I can tell you what I have seen. I have seen the people in the occult, they're going to start dying. And, and I always knew this was coming because there are positions that people have and things that have already been built and structures in the occult that people don't even understand. You know, whether you believe that this earth is a round globe or whether you believe it's flat or whatever you think it is, square or, or a triangle, like you boys said, whatever. There are things that are dimensional. Yes. And, and I think there's the things that we don't understand about the earth and science and things have a lot more to do with dimensions than anything else. I think Chuck Missler hits on a lot of that. And so... Because of these dimensions, and we don't understand it all, the occult 
does. The people in the occult do understand this stuff, and they use it, and they, they use astral projection, and they use all these things that your average person just thinks, oh, that's just not real. That couldn't be real. That's something in a movie. And, and what God's done now is he's raised up people that they hook to this stuff, and so now we're standing here, and we're saying, you hooked me to it? Okay, here goes the blood of Jesus. Yes. Whatever connection I had to that blood of Jesus, we asked you to let it flow, flow, flow to every structure, flow to every dimension, flow to everything the enemy's built to put put um, nations in bondage, to put territories in bondage. Let the blood of Jesus do what he came to do, which is destroy the works of wickedness. Tear it down. Free the people out of bondage. Sh- you know, Shake those prison doors. Cause them to come open. That's what we're getting ready to see. We're getting ready to see people come out of bondage like nothing you've ever seen. We're getting ready to see an anointing to, to let that clog in you get freed yes. to where you're, you're flowing with the Holy Spirit. You're excited <clears throat> about God. You, no matter what's going on, you have faith that God's going to meet your needs. He's going to gonna get you to where you need to be. That's what's coming. Now, the sad part of it is just like I'm seeing, the people that have, have sown all of this destruction, all of this occult power to try to, to destroy people and tear down ministries, they're going to die unless they repent. Yes. They're going to die. And, and it's, there's not going to be some, <laughs> some wonderful reincarnation that they may have been told. or they may, There's not going to be any of that. What they're going to meet it's like I've heard the testimony of people that have sat there with people that died died in their sin and them screaming that demons are coming after them. Yeah. That's what they're going to meet. It's not going to be a peaceful death where somebody just lays down and falls asleep or sitting there saying, and their family hears them say, they're here, the angels have come. Now, isn't that awful that those people that, are dying in the occult, Mike. They, there's no second chance. No. There's no one day, and then you get to say, oh, I repent now. You know, thinking about that, I think of the story. There was a Christian nurse that ended up taking care of Nietzsche as he was dying. And the man who coined the phrase that God is dead, Jesus would come to him. And he would scream and say, no, no, not the Nazarene. Get out of here. Get out of here. And as the evil that those man's writings have loosed upon the earth, Jesus was coming to him as he was dying to try to see him saved. And it so marked that nurse, she said, I will never, ever take care of, of, a, of a sinner or a pagan like him again on their deathbed. I've heard it's terrible. I've heard personal yeah. testimonies of how awful it is, and I've, you know, I've just I've got a heart for people in the occult to come out, um, but I also I also know that that there's some that aren't Mike. Yeah. They're not going they're not going to make it out. Now, I want to I want to share a couple things because there's shakings coming, and the occult have been because they have shaken a lot of the foundations of what God has established on how the very fabric of the universe is supposed to work. The shakings that are coming that we're going to see in Scripture are shakings done by Almighty God. We read in Psalms 82 that because the foundations of the earth were in peril, God must act. We're also reminded in in Psalms where it says, now if the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? God is not going to allow the foundations to be destroyed. There's going to be a realignment. This is the words of Jesus in Matthew 24. Uh, 29 through 31. I'm just going to just read a couple of verses of it here. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be dark and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from heaven. And I don't think that is talking about the physical stars. I think that is talking, we're going to see this connecting to what we see in Revelation uh, chapter 12. And it goes on to say, the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Now, that's talking about principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, that what Jesus is doing as he realigns everything back to him, it's going to disrupt and undo everything that they have done. Then he goes on to say, the sign of the Son of Man uh, will appear in heaven, and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory, and he will send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet. Paul talks about this in, in, uh, in Thessalonians. And will gather his elect from the four winds and from one end of heaven to the other. But in that process, 
the thrones that are going to be shaken is not the throne of God. God is going to shake these principalities and powers thrones that that have done all this stuff and have perpetrated the mystery Babylon religions and have taken the earth and man's hearts out of alignment from God. God is going to absolutely shake to the very foundation that they laid and shake it apart. Mm -hmm. Now, in Hebrews 12, this, this is, this is the, 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 and I believe Paul wrote this, and he's talking about how that there were those in the wilderness that would not heed to the voice of Moses, and then he switches from the voice of Moses to the voice of Jesus. See that you do not refuse him who speaks, for if they did not escape who refused him who spoke on earth, much more shall we not escape if we turn away from him who speaks from heaven, Yahweh Elohim, whose voice then shook the earth. When they met God at Mount Sinai, what did he do? The earth shook, the mountain shook. But now he has promised, saying, Yet once more I shall not shake, I shall shake not only the earth, but also heaven. So this is connecting with what Jesus shared here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now this yet once more indicates the removal of those things that are being shaken as of things that are made, that the things which cannot be shaken may remain. Kingdom of God. Kingdom of God cannot be shaken. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us have grace by which we may serve God acceptably with reverence and holy fear. And look at the coupling here now. One of the things that's going to, I think, is going to be an indicator of the true remnant is they want to serve God, they want to walk in the kingdom, and they, they serve God according to the way he said he wanted to be served and they're going to do it with reverence and holy fear. Reverence and holy fear are going to be indicators of a remnant's heart. Well, and don't you think that's what they had like when Jesus showed up? Yes. You know, after the resurrection, and he showed up to the all of his followers there. And poor old Thomas, he's, he was still down. So you had to, you know, put your hand in here, Thomas. Yeah, and, boy, he got called out over that one, didn't he? Um, but he yeah. said, and then Jesus said, how much more, you know, for those that, that don't see but still believe. But, but think in that moment, Mike. At that moment, they knew. Th think of the revelation of that. They got it. Okay, you've risen. You're a risen Savior. You are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Now look at what happened, the miracles, and how the kingdom manifested around the disciples after that time. They walked by somebody, their shadow, they'd get healed in the shadow. That kingdom power was walking with them because they were so steadfast. They just saw him. Then they would not compromise. This, this is something I, I read an article this week about how long are these Christians going to be deluded about the resurrection? And what, what they miss is the evidence. Josh McDowell does a, a, such a wonderful job with the evidence. When you look historically, these men were willing to die for the truth mm -hmm. that they proclaimed. That's right. They were witnesses. They saw him. They knew that he had risen from the dead. And they were proclaiming his kingdom. They were willing to give up everything in life for it. They were willing to give up their very lives for it. Men that create some crazy system or another or, or f facilitate a lie are not willing to give up their lives. That's one of the things that we see like with communism and everything else. They're not willing to give up their lives now. They're willing for you to give up your life for right. their cause. Right, but they sure but aren't But they willing know to it's a lie theirs. to begin with. But listen to what God told me, Mike, that is so exciting. Because I was thinking about that. You know, that that there's no doubt in their mind. Right now, God's raising up people. There's no doubt. There, we have no doubt whatsoever in God's protective power because we witness things that most people don't see. You know, because we were being attacked in such an outright way. We saw the plane. I saw the plane stopped. So God was telling me, you know, now in the future, I'm going to make places where it won't matter if they send an army, they're not getting through. Henry Gruber because that, has spoken of those that many times. That kind of protection is going to be there. And this is what God told me. He said, you're getting ready to see the wonder of his majesty. And so that I thought that means as, as these reigning evil entities lose their power because God's people are standing and saying, you're not doing this here anymore. 
We take authority and we are asking forgiveness for the sins that have empowered you. You're not doing this anymore. That Jesus is going to be exalted as the King of kings, the Lord of lords. And when his majesty, the wonder of his majesty, as all ruling in a place, all ruling in a nation, that's we're getting ready to see miracles like we have never yep. seen, Mike. People don't realize that whenever you have revival, every true revival of God, has shaken the second heaven. It has diminished the power yep. of the principalities and powers. Well, so much that people walking down the street outside of the, the places where they were preaching, the kingdom would manifest, so they'd drop on their knees and start yeah. crying out to God. I, I love studying well, and, Finney's revivals. And think about just when we say his majesty. Now, if you were thinking in a kingdom, they always called that king your majesty. And everything went according to that, that what that king said. If you're, you know, a citizen that of that kingdom, that's what went. We're getting ready to see that happen here. Yeah, we are. We're getting ready to see people that are so wanting to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit, so follow what God says to do, willing to change, willing to give up, willing to do anything, that that wonder of his majesty as he rules as king is going to manifest and it's going to flow out and people are going to be affected around it. And I, God's been telling me this for a long time. But I honestly think we're there. <laughs> I think I think we we passed some barrier. Whatever this was that God did this last week, I think is is will change everything. Yep. Press in, press in, press in, because we're being established in the kingdom that cannot be shaken. That's right. When revival happens, our kingdom flourishes. It's not shaken. Mm -hmm. Now I, I want to end this with going to Revelation chapter twelve because there there. There, God promised, I'm going to deal with the principalities and powers. And some commentators, like Dake, will say that this part of Revelation 12 is a parenthetical verse, which means it's, uh, in layman terms, it's like a kung fu flashback, you know, that we're seeing something that happened in ages past. I don't believe that. What I believe is happening here is that these principalities and powers and rulers that have exalted themselves above humanity. They're ruling as gods above humanity from the second heaven. Michael goes and clears out the second heaven. Now listen to this. And war broke out in heaven, and Michael and his angels fought with the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought, but they did not prevail, was cast out the serpent, the serpent of old called the devil and Satan, who deceived the whole world, he was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Now, there's there's coming a time. This I think after that, it's like the you know the Bible says that he comes down with great wrath because he knows his time is short. God just eliminated all their thrones. Mm. That's that we're we're seeing Psalms eighty two come to pass in Revelation chapter twelve. There's been this principality war. That's why, guys, that we need to make sure that we're not coming under the auspices of these principalities and powers through the traditions of men, yeah. through bad theology or whatever, but we go back to the Word of God and we allow the Spirit of God to show us exactly what God meant when he said certain things and he gave commandments and how his kingdom functions. We have got to move in Kingdom authority, but the only way to move in kingdom authority is you got to move in kingdom rules and regulations. You got to you got to move in how God created that kingdom to flourish and to function. And when we do, we're free from their influence, and we're moving in a kingdom that cannot be shaken. And we're going to see one day all these masons and mystery religion and all these other all, all these other uh, pagans that have worshipped these things since the Tower of Babel. God is going to throw them down to first heaven reality so that mankind can really see what they have been worshiping. And these things are going to wreak absolute hell on planet Earth out of vengeance. But you know what? Even if we were in the midst of this, we serve a king whose kingdom cannot be shaken. Mm -hmm. You know those, uh, <clears throat> Mike, they have those... Oh, they have cartoons and they have all these things about, and, and I think that's why, you know, they've talked on the news about how this Avengers movie, uh, big blockbuster going 24 hours a day in the, in the theaters because all the people want to see it and stuff like that. <clears throat> Look at what they do, like with that Thor person, carries that big hammer. Now, that's a, that's a god. That would be a, a fallen angel. Yeah. 
they don't look like that. No, they don't. That's in the state before they fail. They don't look like that. So for the women that are being seduced by that and think, oh, it, that's what that is. That whole thing is to seduce people into, into wanting this other stuff. It's all a seduction thing. They're, That's why people are so moved with emotion and things. Man, they know how to do these things. I think they are. They are. There's something about mankind that we're sensing that we we need a savior. We need somebody to come fix everything that has gone so wrong. And we're and That's what's compelling people. I think that one of the things to think we want to see good conquer evil. Yes. But you can't get it conquered by other evil. No, you can't. <laughs> it's because the the true hero, if you will, is Jesus, the That's, the King the of Kings and Lords. He he's the one that all creation is going to answer to, and yeah. he's going to fix this stuff. Because I can tell you, the superheroes that they made, the ones that that they worked and and made things like Iron Man, where you had to take your mind and you got to bust through cardboard, and you got to bust through wood, then you got to bust through some kind of rock cement formation, then you got to bust through steel. That wasn't made. To protect, no, and maybe the elite, <laughs> but that wasn't made. That was made to destroy. Well, when you look at all the comics, all they did is they either drew from uh, the heroes of old, Genesis chapter six, that we get our mythologies from, that were the gods of old, and they extrapolated them over into something more palatable for this generation, or we drew from the technology that was given by the Watchers to create scientific methods of becoming superheroes. And the truth be known, the only the only one that is Superman, if you will, was born in Bethlehem, and was born of a virgin. And the only way we and he can, was the second Adam. Only way we can wield any power is yes. not our own. It's, no, it's just his. as as an instrument to speak forth what what his power is going to do. Absolutely. And so, guys, it, it's time to press into the kingdom. There's a shaking coming, but our foundation. Oh, my is goodness, sure. there is a, there is some power coming from on high. Yes. And let the let the very gates of hell be shaken to their core. Yeah, that's right. As Jesus begins to rule and reign, now, Father, it. give us the grace. Give us the grace today, Father, to align to your kingdom, spirit, soul, and body. Father, we renounce anything on the inside yes. of us that yes. does not line up to the throne of Jesus. Bow the that knee does to not Jesus. line up to the Word of God. We renounce everything but Jesus yes. and Jesus alone. And Father, we just thank you for all our partners. Father, every person that's praying for us. Lord, we are so appreciative. And we just ask for every believer that that fears your name, Father, that, that blessings would flow to them exceeding abundantly what we would even ask or think. And Father, we just, we're so grateful for them. And we just love you guys. Thank you so much. Hi, friends. Pastor Mike Spalding here to tell you about the Go Therefore 2019 conference. This year's gathering will be at the University of Northwest Ohio Event Center, July 26th and 27th. The conference will conclude Sunday, July 28th at Calvary Chapel of Lima. This is the largest gathering of acclaimed Bible teachers, researchers, and prophecy experts anywhere in the United States. Here's our speaker list. Author, Bible teacher, and host of the Kingdom Intelligence Briefing, Dr. Michael Lake. Bradley Dean, host of Sons of Liberty Radio. Author and founder and director of Peacemakers Outreach, Dr. John Diamond. Russ Dizdar of Shatter the Darkness Ministries. Coach Dave Dobbenmeyer of Pass the Salt Ministries. Pastor and author, Dr. Carl Gallops. Researcher, Carl Tykrib. Publisher of the Wisconsin Christian News, Rob Pugh. Author, Douglas Woodward. Prophecy expert, John Haller, David Arthur of Alphabet Man Ministries, filmmaker Tom Dunn, researcher David Paxton, cybersecurity and artificial intelligence researcher Mark Trump, Created Equal founder Mark Harrington, the last evangelist filmmaker David Hevener, author, researcher and lecturer L.A. Marzulli, author Chad Schaefer, British filmmaker Mark Sutherland, pastor and musician Leighton Howerton, former combat veteran and author Jamie Walden, and of course, me, Dr. Mike Spalding. Tickets are only $59. You can secure your seat for the Go Therefore Conference at this website, gothereforeconference.com. This event will sell out quickly. Ticket and hotel information is at the conference website, gothereforeconference.com. Hope to see you there. Oh, 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 oh.